So if we look in this panel, uh, these motors usually have a wiring diagram on the side around here. Let's put the camera around there. So knowing that we can take the brown wire and the brown and white stripe wire there, they go through here. So we're going to take this panel off the so we're going to follow the brown wire and the brown white wire through here. So this is the other panel. Now this is where all the gas and everything comes in. So lots of fun. If we follow the brown and brown white wire, you can see it goes to a capacitor down there. And that's the one we're uh, suspecting has failed on us. So with any capacitor, we need to discharge it first to make it safe. Now this isn't a dual capacitor, those ones have three prongs on the top. This is just a simple capacitor with two terminals. What we're going to do is short those two, so we're going to put something like a screwdriver between them. Make sure the screwdriver has a plastic handle. And to be on the safe side, use uh, rubber-ended gloves. That way you don't shock yourself and potentially cause damage to uh, your own safety. So we're just going to um, touch those. Uh, so we're going to discharge the capacitor. If it's been sitting a while, it's probably okay, but you know, you need to do this on the safe side. And then we're going to remove the wires from the top. So that will be the brown and the brown white from the top terminals. Then we're going to probe it with the multimeter. And to test the capacitor, I'll show you right now where it's not windy. So there are three basic tests you can do to ca test a capacitor. So you can test the capacitance, which is the uh, measured in microfarads here. So 5 MFD, that's how much charge it can actually store inside. And you will need a special meter to do that. But what we can do with these is actually test the resistance of this and whether it's shorted to ground. So two different tests we can do. And if we've verified either of those are true, we don't need to bother with the uh, capacitance test. So to test the resistance, just grab a simple multimeter like this with an ohm setting. So that's the omega sign. Put it on something like 2 thousand uh, ohms there and make sure your prongs are plugged into the ohm setting and the con side here so black in con red in the omega it doesn't really matter because the polarity will just be different if they're in the wrong order but as long as those two are all set up for the homes reading we're just going to check our capacitor by just putting the leads on top now what will happen on a good working capacitor, um, we put the leads on here and it will just send a very small voltage, you know, less than half a volt or something. And what we'll see here is a growing resistance reading on here, so it will slowly grow up to 2000 and then just finish at 1 here. So let's try that now. So what we're going to see here is no reading at all. What we do now, we're just going to reverse the leads and see what happens. With the leads reversed, we have absolutely no reading as well. So without even doing the other tests, we know our capacitor has failed. So here's our new replacement capacitor. Let's just try that exact same test again. So we have some activity on the meter here, and we're just putting a little charge into it, nothing uh, that's going to go crazy or blow it or anything like that. And we can see it just went up to 200k. We're going to reverse the leads now, change the polarity, and you can see it's now reversing. So yeah, this, this is how to do a simple resistance test on a capacitor, very straightforward. The next test we can do is a short to ground test. So a short to ground test just means you have a short circuit, just like the movie really. So what that happens is we have the circuit inside here, um, but it's actually shorted to ground, so um, the case on this capacitor is uh, grounded. So what we can really do here is just probe this right here, and then probe the casing. And what will happen is the same result as touching the probes together. So you can see here when I do this, the meter's not moving at all. If I put my um, prongs together, which means the circuit is shorted, we can see some activity there. And that's what will happen. If it's shorted to ground, you will see zero, 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 just like touching these. And on the old one, I mean, um, none of these are shorted to ground, but that is what will happen. This one failed the resistance test. 
I'll be surprised also if it's shorted to ground. No, it's not. But that's how to check a short to ground. Again, to do the capacitance test, the micro farad, so you will need a special meter so you can have a look how to do that. But if it's already failed the resistance test or the short to ground test, you know it's time for a replacement. And these are very cheap. You know, we're talking five, six dollars. So now we know this capacitor is not working, we're just going to unbolt it there. On here it's a 6mm, but needle nose pliers and obviously bolt size will depend on your application. So we're going to take this capacitor out and we're going to replace it. Before messing with any electrics in AC systems, it's good to pull the fuse to be on the safe side. It's just the case of locating the fuse box and pulling it out there. That way we haven't got voltage bouncing around while we have our hands in there. So now it's out, let's look at replacing this. Uh, I'll tell you what these numbers mean right now. So on a capacitor here, you have lots of readings here. You have a, obviously a model number which will guarantee you get the same measurements of voltage and farads, but on this one specifically it says it's mic uh, 5 microfarads, that's what MFD means, with a tolerance of plus minus 5%. So when you source a new capacitor, you have to make sure the capacitance measured in microfarads is exactly the same. So there's a new one here. You can see my five microfarads. In terms of the voltage here, now the capacitor has to be higher or equal to uh, whatever motor, for example, it's trying to start. So the capacitor gives the motor a bit of a jolt because it stores a charge to get it started. So uh, the voltage here will be more than or the same as the motor. So our motor here is 370, the capacitor is 370, but the capacitor could have 500 um, you know, voltage rating, which is perfectly fine, it just cannot be lower. So these are the only two real figures you need to look at when sourcing a capacitor, but you, you can go by the product number, but in those occasions where they're sold out, for example, then these are the figures you usually look at here. With our new one here, we've... Uh, pretty much got exactly the same thing, 317 and 5 uh, microfarads. So uh, that's pretty much it in terms of sourcing a new uh, replacement capacitor for your failed one.